Reducing Workplace Bias The halo effect comes about when we overgeneralize one of a person's positive characteristics and assume they are wonderful in other areas of life. The halo effect can set us up for disappointment, as nobody is perfect, and it can lead to the uncritical acceptance of ideas and opinions that we might not otherwise endorse. The lesson and meditation not only increase your awareness of the halo effect and its dangers, they will also help you spot positive overgeneralizations and help you be more realistic in your appraisal of others. The brain works to maximize its energy. As a result, the mind's default setting is to simplify everything as much as possible leading us to perceive the world via shortcuts and knee-jerk responses. One way this manifests is the halo effect. The halo effect works by taking some of what we know about a person and generalizing that information to every aspect of their being. So, if we think of someone as smart, we tend to attribute other positive characteristics to that person, even in the absence of any evidence especially in the absence of any evidence. For example, physically attractive people are judged as smarter and more sociable than less attractive individuals. This can turn into a self-fulfilling prophecy. You like someone on first meeting and begin to project onto them all manner of other positive characteristics that are a reflection of your need for consistency and not necessarily anything to do with the other person's attributes. In the early infatuation stages of love, this perception reigns supreme. Your newfound love can do no wrong and is perfect. However, that is a perception that cannot stand the test of time, because no one is that perfect. The halo effect is testament to how much we generalize our perceptions about people from very limited knowledge. This can work to exaggerate purportedly good or bad first impressions. If the only thing you know about a person is that they were fired from their previous job, it will anchor your perceptions. Wisdom is recognizing the severe limitations and inherent injustice of the halo effect Unfortunately, first impressions are hard to shake and will continue to influence your narrative. See anchoring. However, the height of wisdom is the recognition of what you don't know and not giving in to the default setting of generalizing from very limited pieces of knowledge, which may or may not be accurate and are certainly very simplified. As a leader, the halo effect can manifest in a number of ways. You might attract such a perception. On the one hand, it is nice to be seen in an exaggeratedly positive way as that can enhance your influence. On the other hand, unrealistic expectations also set you up disappointing others, which can be problematic. In addition, a leader might very well have their favorite confidants and colleagues in the boardroom and amongst the senior executives, and this can make you overvalue their opinions and not see some of the flaws in their thinking. Or a new candidate for a senior position is described in glowing terms by someone in HR. Your first thought might be, he sounds amazing. It's not the first thought that comes to your mind that is the important one. It is the second, third, fourth, and fifth ones, but especially the second one, which should always be questioning your first knee-jerk, simplistic response. In this case, that second thought should be something like this. Well, he obviously made an impression on HR. I wonder what he is really like. The halo effect that would be justified is the halo over your head whenever you effectively challenge those knee-jerk generalizations about someone whom you really don't know. Great leaders don't overvalue generalizations, even good ones.
Do you think that you overvalue people based on the halo effect? If so, who are they? Do you think that you undervalue people based on the halo effect? If so, who are they? A good leader's mantra. I shouldn't judge people at all, but I certainly cannot judge people based on very limited knowledge. Meditation We all romanticize the people we adore. John Green A lot of companies have nice-sounding cultural values like integrity, respect, and excellence. But if those values don't map to specific behaviors, then they quickly get lost instead. We see what's called a halo effect where leaders tend to overvalue certain attributes and undervalue others. Peggy Johnson If people are failing, they look inept. If people are succeeding, they look strong and good and competent. That's the halo effect. Your first impression of a thing sets up your subsequent beliefs. If the company looks inept to you, you may assume everything else they do is inept. Daniel Kahneman The halo effect is a testament to our need for consistency. It's almost as if the pleasure we feel when contemplating someone's strengths inoculates us against seeing their weaknesses. We want to bask in the glory, and we don't want to dilute that feeling. It's way less confusing when people fall into simple categories. Our feelings are hard to scale, and it is so much easier if we see people as all one thing or another, and nothing in between. We all romanticize people we adore. As you relax and let go of the need for classification, appreciate that perceiving people as a variety of different talents and imperfections is the greatest honor you can give them and yourself. Do not give in to the need for simplicity. Resist and see the people around you as they really are, complex and diverse. We all romanticize people we adore. See yourself first, your many strengths and the ways you need to improve. If you focus on a strength, does that mean your weaknesses all disappear? If you focus on a weakness, does that mean you have no strength? Embrace your complexity so you can embrace the complexity of others. Great leaders don't romanticize the people they adore. Great leaders don't demonize the people they dislike. But you don't have to follow the path of simplicity. The path of simplicity leads into the woods of ignorance, woods so thick that you are blind to the light. Seek the light of the truth, not simplicity. When you adore someone based on the need for simplicity, you are setting them up to fail. The pedestal you have put them on is so high that if they falter, when they falter, they cannot help but become crashing to the ground. Great leaders know that moderation is needed in all things, including perceptions.
Don't allow yourself to be fooled into extreme judgments. The more extreme your judgment, the more incorrect and damaging it will turn out to be. Moderation is needed in all things, especially your perception of others. Great leaders appreciate kindness, charity, and love, but don't assume that they are universal behaviors for the person showing you that kindness, charity, and love. As you know that person more, you will be able to much more accurately perceive them and their authentic motivations. Open your mind to the world and the many different ways that can be found in it before making hasty judgments of others. After all, the very same thing that you judge from where you are may very well be something totally different in meaning on the other side of the world. The problem with making hasty judgments is that it will emphasize your ignorance at the end of the day. See Joy Bell. Great leaders know that making hasty judgments only emphasizes ignorance. Open your mind to complexity. Rise above snap judgments and generalizations, even if they are pleasing, especially if they are pleasing. Great leaders open their minds to complexity. When your mind presents a fast judgment to you, challenge it. Anything that quick and automatic must be flawed. It's not the truth, but a function of habit. You would not want someone to be so knee-jerk in their reactions to you. You would want them to realize context, your complexity, and not set you up to fail through false assumptions and generalizations, no matter how nice they may be or good they make you feel. Great leaders know that the problem with making hasty judgments is that it only emphasizes ignorance. Great leaders open their minds to complexity. Reducing Workplace Bias